Ah, the Amstrad CPC range where I first cut my teeth in computing. Loading games from cassette on the CPC 464 shown here with a green screen monitor, while looking longingly at the 6128 I just couldn't afford with a built-in 3-inch floppy drive. If I want an instant nostalgia hit, I need look no further to get all misty-eyed over 8-bit classics and compilation sets of my favourite titles. But enjoying retro on classic hardware, as many of you will know, isn't without its problems. Failing media, like this copy of Death Wish 3, which is just grinding to a halt here. Hardware maintenance, discoloration of plastics burning down your house with a faulty power supply, all concerns of the dedicated retro gamers of today. And sometimes, just sometimes, when another game fails to load correctly or another key fails to work on the keyboard, your mind wanders to alternative methods to try and get all of the enjoyment from retro with none of the pain. And that's the topic of today's Tech Nibble, because the two machines on the bench, well, they are Amstrad CPCs, but this box here, this promises to be every bit as authentic as those two original CPCs. It's not an emulator, it's not an FPGA device, it's not a Raspberry Pi stuffed into a box. So what is it then? Well, allow me to give you the tour today. If you're a CPC fan, I think you're going to like this. And if you're not, well, stick around because you're about to see the lengths that some fans will go in the quest to preserve their favorite retro hardware and get maximum enjoyment out of it. Today's episode is sponsored by me. Head over to rmcretro.store for a range of stylish posters of retro goodness in a choice of sizes and framing options to suit your caves, as well as laptop stickers, including Trevor, all hail Trevor, and an easy peel design to avoid sticker residue on your laptop, retro tech, face, wherever you choose to stick them. Head over to rmcretro.store to see a range of merch to support the channel, my book, vinyl record, and more. Check back frequently for more new items arriving soon. rmcretro.store. Thank you for your support. Hello, cave dwellers. Yes, what we have here in this fairly nondescript but quite attractive box is the Just CPC for ATX. Doesn't tell you a lot more about what it is really, does it? But that's what's inside. The box itself is quite a standard off the shelf box that you might put an ITX motherboard in. Maybe you'd create a discrete media center PC to sit under your telly or something like that. It's not unattractive, but it certainly doesn't scream Amstrad. It could perhaps do with some nice decals. A green and a red stripe perhaps would look really nice on this. But if we look around the case, we start to get an idea of what it is. On the front, we've got the power button. On the side, a couple of USB ports and uh, some air vents. Not that this thing gets particularly hot. And then on the back where you'd expect to find your PC ports, we've got some different ports and a 3D printed plate to accommodate them. We've got the five volt power jack there. We've got a D9 port, and that is what's known as the user port on the Amstrad CPC. And on a CPC, that's what you'd plug your joystick into when you're ready for some gaming. There are a couple of three and a half mil jacks, and then there's a PS2 port and uh, what looks like an S video port there. The button at the top here is a reset button, and that's all there is to it from the outside. Doesn't tell us a great deal, does it? Which is why I need to take the lid off right now. and We can have a look in and get a real idea and a feel for what this is. Where's my screwdriver? Let me grab that. Just the two screws to take out the back to get the lid off. It's easy to get into, but you shouldn't really need to have to get into this too often once you're up and running, unless perhaps you've got an upgrade to put in there. Two screws out, we'll flip it over and that top should just fall off. There it is. And now we can really get an idea for what this is. If we look inside, we've got a rather interesting PCB. And that is the Just CPC for ATX. There's also some upgrades and I'm just gonna pop them out now and we'll start with the base spec system. And we will put these upgrades back in and get a feel for what they are. But I just wanna show you it in its uh, purest form, first of all. There we go, get a look at that. Now this is made by Zaxxon and you can look it up at 8bitclone.com. There's also a YouTube channel where he shows off his wares. So I'll include a link to that in the video description. And the first thing you'll notice, although this is a pretty much a brand new PCB, you'll notice some very old and familiar chips on there. First up, the CPU is a Zilog Z80 CPU sat here. I can immediately see down here an AY audio chip, a favorite amongst many 8-bit micros of the 1980s. And over here is one that's actually labeled Amstrad, 
And that's the ULA from an Amstrad CPC. So a custom chip there from Amstrad. There's some 7000 series logic. And over in the corner is some very period authentic 1980s RAM. And I think that is 64, might be 128K. We'll have a look once we fire this up. So you start to get a feel for what this is. It's not FPGA, it's not emulation, it's nothing like that. It's a completely recreated board from an Amstrad CPC in a different form factor that's using those original chips. It is, in essence, an Amstrad CPC. We're not going to experience any lag or any oddities. It should be a perfect replication because it is a transplanted CPC into a new board. A replica, if you like, for your convenience. And it brings more than just convenience in the extra things that you can do with it. But while we're on the subject of convenience, let's just look at the size of it because it's certainly more convenient to pop on your desk compared to, say, the 464 over here, which is one of the longest micros I have. Yeah, you're making quite a desk saving, although you do need to put a keyboard in front of it to use it because we don't have the integrated keyboard. And the keyboard that I'll be using is this. It's the Microsoft Basic keyboard with a PS2 connector on it. So you can enjoy a modern keyboard, although I must admit it does feel a little bit odd not having the reds and the greens of the original keyboard. You know, for me, it's quite an iconic keyboard just because of my own personal history with the machine. Maybe you can get a nice modern mechanical keyboard with some green and uh, red keycaps to finish this off if you want that full experience. Now, above and beyond the original CPC, you'll also notice these ports. There's seven of them in there, and those are ports for upgrades and expansions. Something that you would have relied on with the edge connector on the original CPC. I spoke to the creator of this board, Zaxxon, and I asked what was it that inspired you to create it? Well, it turns out he creates all kinds of devices and upgrades for CPCs and other 8-bit micros, and it's the reliability of the edge connector on the CPC that actually drove him to make this. He was getting fed up with reliability issues on his CPC. I can't say I've had issues myself, but I'm not plugging things in day in, day out and creating upgrades. The most I plug into it is the disk drive interface, which we'll come on to shortly. But he was obviously suffering problems with that, so he went ahead and created his board. And in doing so, he's added these expansion sockets. And we can plug expansions such as these in, which we'll come on to shortly, but let's just look at it in its purest form. Let's plug it into the TV, this Sony CRT TV, so we can get that full scanline experience and see how it looks. And then we'll put the upgrades in. Let's fire it up. On turning on the system, we can see that it does indeed have 128K of RAM. So it's the equivalent of a CPC 6128. And that familiar blue screen with the yellow text really does make me feel all warm and fuzzy. Very notable in his absence is a tape deck or a disk drive. So you're probably wondering how we actually load software into this thing. And in this basic spec with the upgrades removed, we have two options. One is to plug a device, a tape deck, a mobile phone playing, an audio file, whatever takes your fancy, into a 3.5mm audio input on the back. This red PCB is a Bluetooth audio module, so I can fire up my laptop or mobile phone or any other Bluetooth enabled device, pair it with the CPC. The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. And now, I can just play an audio file wirelessly to the CPC thanks to the Bluetooth and it will load right up. Words a younger me would have found mind-blowing. But here we are, the future of 128K computing is here and now. My game of choice to test this out, the first game I've ever loaded on an 8-bit micro via Bluetooth is Grand Prix Simulator from Codemasters, written by the Oliver Twins, and it loads right up, and I had a great blast on it. However, while this is great for convenience, and it does away with dodgy media and failing belts on tape decks, it doesn't do anything to help with the load times. I had to wait a good five minutes for the game to load, and it made me wonder, now that we've eliminated fluctuations in the audio and other things caused by the poor condition of a tape, or other things that induce errors loading from media such as a cassette tape, can we load the game a little bit quicker? And so I did a couple of things in Audacity. I chopped out the big gaps of empty audio, so that saved us a little bit of time, and then I increased the audio speed. I, at first I tried 20% and that just wasn't playing, and after a few more attempts I found that I could load the game consistently and reliably 
with a speed increase of 10%. I've gone off on a bit of a tangent here. I just got interested in seeing how far I could push it and it's something I might want to try on other micros at some point. Just how fast can we push audio through the machines and still get them to load? Could be a fun experiment one day. So we've established we've got a clone of an Amstrad CPC 6128 and I think it's time to throw everything that we've got at it. I've got three upgrades to play with today. We've got a four megabyte RAM upgrade and that is a huge boost to the system's memory over the typical 64 or 128K. I've also got an M4 card and you're going to love this one. And over here, I've got a disk drive interface card. So that's a, a recreation of the original interface that we had on the desk and attached to the top of it is a micro GoTek. Now a GoTek is a virtual floppy drive which loads disk images, in this instance from the USB port into which I'll plug a memory stick loaded up with disks. I should point out though that you don't need all of these things. The M4 doesn't need the disk drive interface, the GoTek doesn't need the RAM. We're just putting them all in because I've got them to play with and it'd be good to get a feel for what they do and if we need them. If I had to choose one out of all of these, it would be the M4 card easily. That gives us micro SD card storage, but also, check this out, it's got a Wi-Fi network adapter on it. Oh yes, this CPC is going online. Installation is easy, we just slot them in, although there are no notches or anything like that to tell you if you're putting them in the right way round. So you've got to be a little bit careful, make sure you've got all the pins lined up, but then they slot in. And into the USB port, I'll pop my memory stick loaded up with those disk images. Now lots of you will have used a GoTek on the many systems that it supports. You have to first put the virtual disk image into a slot and then select the slot that you want to mount. This can be done on your PC or with the selector software natively on the host computer. And that's what I'm doing here. There's the selector software and I've put a game called Robin Hood Legend Quest into slot one. So that's all loaded up and ready to go. To see the GoTek, we then now have to disable the M4 board. This is because the M4 hogs the A and B disk drive letters for itself, the two letters that the CPC has. So we won't see the GoTek unless we turn it off with the command M4 ROM off. And now if we run the cat command to see the contents of the floppy disk, we can see that Robin Hood is indeed inserted and we can run the game. The only thing we're missing is the clack of the disc being red. The GoTek works well. I am missing having a display to scroll through all of the different disc images and mount them. This is something that I have on other GoTeks, but it's missing from this miniature version. So I'm not too happy about that, but it does do what it does nicely. Although I can't say I'm massively enjoying this particular game though. Robin Hood Legends Quest. Sorry, Oliver Twins, this one's not for me. Let's switch over to the M4 upgrade now because this is crazy. It's available for regular CPCs with the edge connector also. It's not exclusive to this build. The first thing I'm doing is using the net set command and that connects us up to my Wi-Fi by specifying the SSID, the password. I've told it to automatically get an IP address from my DHCP server. And then we're using Google's DNS service so that we can resolve addresses on the internet. That's all wrapped up in the one command. And then after 10 seconds or so, it has successfully connected up to the Wi-Fi. And I know what you're thinking, what's the point of putting an 8-bit micro online? Well, let me show you. If I open up my laptop here and in a web browser, I can now connect to the CPC which hosts a web page on that M4 card. And within that web page, I can do things like copy files onto the SD card. I can upload alternative ROMs into the CPC as well as images of software on cartridge. I can remotely reset the CPC as you can see here at the press of a button. And I can also go into a hack menu which allows me to take a snapshot of the current system state and then restore it back later. So that's really great for beating tricky games. There's all sorts of cool stuff in here. Now I'm just going to drag and drop a disk image from Windows Explorer into the web page. And within seconds, I can browse to that image and run the program on the CPC itself. So that's a really neat way of getting this onto the network and allowing you to try out new software easily without taking a USB stick back and forth to a PC. Although if you want, you can take the micro SD card out, put it into your PC and just copy all of the software you want on it and do it that way. 
There are lots of ways of using this M4. Now another advantage of being online with it includes firmware upgrades. You can just type the command upgrade and it will go out to the internet and download the latest firmware and install it. So that's really cool. And then this command I'm typing, HTTP GET, this downloads programs directly from the internet. So I'm downloading a program on my CPC over Wi-Fi from somewhere on the other side of the world and it grabs that file in four seconds flat. I can then run it from the SD card where it's downloaded it to and when you compare that to the five minutes of cassette tape loading that we started off with, even if it was over Bluetooth, it's utterly brilliant. There's no other words for it, I love it. I spent a lot of time enjoying this setup and getting lost in my own nostalgia, running all of these programs, all of these games. And to make things even easier for myself, I uploaded a custom ROM onto the M4, which gives me a front-end program shown here, and that lets me easily navigate the SD card on the M4 and run programs directly, rather than using the command prompt to navigate in and out of directories, check file names, run file names. It's all just nice and simple within this front end and that really was the cherry on the top for me. And then we get onto that final upgrade which of course is the four megabytes of RAM. Now if you think back to the mid 80s that was an utterly insane amount of memory. It would have cost a fortune and of course no software for the CPC was written to utilize that. I can't think of anything that was written to use more than 128K outside of perhaps CPM, the operating system might have been able to tap in to a bit more memory. But there's nothing I can really show you other than this. This is Symbos, a more recent operating system written for 8-bit micros, and this can access more memory. It still splits that RAM up into paged memory chunks because the Z80 CPU in the CPC, it has a 16-bit address bus, so it can only address 64K natively, and then the memory is paged in and out. And this operating system will put applications into their own chunks of 64K page RAM to run. It really is doing an operating system's job under the hood. This isn't just a pretty face, this isn't a demo. It's a full-blown operating system. And even in this, I haven't played with it an awful lot, but it is only displaying 512K of available memory. So I don't know if that's a limitation of the OS or if it's not detecting my upgrade properly or, or what's happening there. So that RAM upgrade, not really nostalgic for me. It's really aimed at developers who might want to push this thing to the limit. And I hope they do. I'd love to see what they come up with using that. So the overall package here in the just CPC 480X, I really do enjoy it. It's a clone. It's a perfectly formed clone and it has evolved even more from here. Zaxxon who makes it has now made an alternative board, a version two if you like, which is the same, but it fits in an original case. So it's that nice long board to fit in your original CPC and tap into the original keyboard. So you really can get an authentic experience that way. All of the benefits, none of the drawbacks, which is what we were looking for with this. I hope you've enjoyed looking at it in today's Tech Nibble and it's given you some ideas as to whether you want this, whether you want the M4 or the GoTech upgrade for your own CPC and all of the links to everything we've talked about are in the video description. As always, thank you for watching. I'm gonna be spending an awful lot of time for the rest of today playing on this CPC and uh, I'll see you next time. Take care everyone, bye-bye.